Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining me. If this is your first time here, please subscribe to the channel and check out the other videos. And if you're here for a second, third, or fourth time, thank you so much for coming back and getting creative. All right, guys, this is another fun painting for my beginner painters. So grab your supplies, transfer your traceable to your surface, and as always, make sure you take your progress photos. Now on mine, I went over my traceable lines with a black Sharpie marker for those of you at home that are gonna pause the video and draw what you see. If you utilized the traceable, you do not have to do the black Sharpie marker. And I am starting with the background. We're gonna do a light purple, and that is white with a little bit of purple. Demonstrating a few different brush strokes I want you to try as you apply your paint to your background. And we're gonna be filling in that whole area um, around our little gnome. So go ahead, um, mix your paint. If you have to mix it two or three times, and it maybe it's a little uh, darker or lighter each time, that's okay, just embrace that. Because once we have this filled in with the light purple, we're actually going to do a wet on wet blending method and put some darker and lighter colors into this. So this is a good place to just kind of get comfortable with the painting process. And like I said earlier, you are more than welcome to switch out any colors here. If you prefer a blue or teal or different colored background, go right ahead and do that. Um, same with any of the um, aspects on our little gnome. Uh, switch it out and add to. Feel free to add extra things to this painting. Use it just as kind of a guideline um, as you create your creations. All right, and if you're one of my first time painters, make sure you take a deep breath and inhale. You might have been holding your breath. Um, just kind of laugh at yourself, but keep on painting. And here you can see where I grabbed some of that direct purple and literally slapped it on the background and moved my brush back and forth. And you can notice how it kind of diffuses into that background. Now you do have to do this while your background is wet, which is why it is called wet on wet blending. And the more that you move your brush, the more the two mix together um, and kind of diffuses. So if you want something a little more solid like I'm doing right here, slap that dark purple on there, but only move your brush a couple of times on top of it. And this is also a fun place if you are inclined to finger paint. Go right ahead and do that. If you are on a stretched canvas, I do recommend that you carry this color around the sides of the canvas. Just looks, just looks nicer when you hang it on the wall. And then here we're uh, rinsing the brush off really good. We're going to grab some white paint um, and kind of do just the opposite of the darker. Slap it on there. And then I want you to notice how quickly that diffuses in with that base color. So our lighter colors kind of get mixed in a lot quicker. So if you end up uh, moving your brush way too much, just reapply the white paint and move your brush uh, a few uh, less brush strokes. But do everything that you want to your background now while the paint is wet and then pause the video, take your progress photo, and we'll be moving into the other elements. And first we're gonna start off with that hat. We're just using that direct red, any color that you want, but putting that red on there and I am using student grade paint, so I'm applying my paint a little bit thicker um, than I normally would just for a little bit more opaque coverage. So if you've got kind of thin paint at home, uh, you can do the same thing. You can apply it a little bit thicker or you can do two or three coats of um, that particular color. And in some of my other videos, I will go through and put a second coat on um, some of the areas. So adjust what you need to with the supplies that you have on hand at home. All right, you're doing a great job. Like I said, I'm really proud of you for painting and stepping out of your comfort zone and just trying something new. And hopefully you are painting. Um, if you've got a roommate or a family or kids, hopefully you guys are painting together. This does, is a fun activity to do. All right, and kind of holding that brush at that 45 degree angle like I was just doing, that allows me to keep that thick paint on there. So as you're playing, um, kind of play with the pressure of your brush or the angle of your brush. And here I did switch brushes. I'm in the medium flat brush and grab some of that direct, uh, some of that black paint. And we're just basically gonna place it on there. There we go, let's get a little bit more on there. And then you kind of smooth that into the base color, which is the red for us. Still keeping light pressure 
and still here you can even see that I'm kind of holding that brush at like a 45 degree angle so I'm not getting too much of the end of the bristles making those brush strokes. All right, so doing good. You guys are doing awesome. We're going to move into um, a light pink. So there's going to be white with a little bit of red. And I do actually keep this pretty light. You can go a little darker than what I do. And we're going to fill in his nose. And if you prefer doing a different color or you want a different skin tone, you can use your raw sienna um, or other colors to make the skin tone color you want. All right, and there's an, uh, that was actually, I did want to keep it light, so I actually just grabbed some of that white and placed it on top of the light pink mixture, um, almost kind of making it not obvious. So this will pop out once we get a few of the other colors on there. But like I said, feel free if you don't like this color, switch it out to something that you like. So fill it in his nose and those little hands, um, and then we'll make a bit of a darker pink for the heart that he's holding. Again, uh, switch colors if you want, or if you even want to put a name or a message in this heart, uh, I highly recommend doing that. All right, you guys are doing a great job. Really proud of you for painting, and hopefully while you're painting, uh, you just kind of forget about the rest of the world for a little bit. Just focus on transforming this white surface into something that you created, and just get lost in the process of painting. It's a very therapeutic process. Um, outlet to have in your life. And if you've watched some of my other videos, you do know that I encourage finding creative outlets on a regular basis. All right, so here you just saw that I grabbed some of that red. We're gonna do the same thing that we did in the background in the hat. You kind of place that red on the dark pink and then with that light pressure, just kind of blend it into uh, your base color. And by doing this, this is what helps kind of create the illusion of a slightly 3D object on a flat 2D surface. And that's really kind of what art is, is creating that kind of magical doorway when you paint something, you transform that blank surface. All right, so for this little guy's cloak, I am using yellow. And then when I applied the whole yellow, I realized it was actually just not quite the color I wanted to go for. So I ended up adding green. So uh, feel free if you want to keep it yellow or a different color. I think teal would have actually looked good here. Um, but yeah, switch it up to whatever you need. All right, there's my little bit of green magically appeared on my plate. And I'm literally, I didn't let this dry. So that yellow is still wet. And just like we did in the background and all the other areas, I like to kind of build on your skills. But taking a little bit of that green and then just mixing it into the various uh, sections of the yellow. And if you want to cover all the yellow or none of it or just parts of it, um, get this to your liking for his little cloak or his little outfit. All right, and I think I forgot to put those in there before, but a good place to pause the video and take a progress photo. Hopefully you took a few more than I have mentioned or recommended. Um, it's always nice to look back at your progress photos in a year from now and see how far you have come. All right, so like you saw that we switched over to white and we're getting a little base for his little mustache and beard on there. And I am using that middle flat brush and holding it sideways and making kind of these long marks in the direction that the fur, or not the fur, the hair on the mustache and the beard would be going. I did allow everything to dry. So this part where I'm going over the cloak of the green and the yellow is fully dry. So that way the white stays nice and solid and opaque on top of that. And also don't forget that little spot underneath his nose right above the heart. But we've got all that filled in with white paint. Now we're going to make a light gray and that is white with a touch of black. And remember a little bit of pigment will go a long way in your mixture. And here I am switching down to the medium or the small pointy brush and putting this light gray in a few areas to create some shadow on the hair. I am still moving that brush in the long kind of the direction that the hair would be flowing or moving and um, kind of those long, long, I guess we call them dash marks. And now making a bit darker gray and same thing, just accentuating and going a little bit darker in um, the shadow areas for here. So I do recommend that you get out of your chair, look at it from a distance. And if you think that maybe you need a bit more of the gray or shadow somewhere, go ahead and add it based on what it looks like from that distance. We will be outlining all of this with a uh, with the black paint at the end and that helps kind of give it that pop art feel. 
All right, and now moving right into the black, we're gonna fill in those little uh, uh, boots or feet, and then we'll be outlining the rest of our design. So as you move into doing the outlines, I'm still using that small pointy brush, and I want you to kind of treat the brush like a pencil. With light pressure, you can create a little bit of a wider, or a lighter line, skinnier line, and with a little more pressure, you'll create a bit of a wider line. So if this is your first time kind of practicing some of these lines, you might have varying widths of line as you do this. That's okay, because that means you're just getting practice, and the next time that you paint, your muscle memory of what you're learning right now will, um, your muscles will remember it, your brain will remember it, and it'll be a little bit easier. So if you are finding that your brush is shaky as you go to make these lines, that means you're holding your breath. So if you exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas, that will help your process. And again, be kind to yourself. You will be more proficient at making lines the next time that you paint. And then after that, you'll be even more proficient and, and so on. So basically just keep practicing, be kind to yourself. You're doing a great job. You've come this far already and you did transfer that white or transform that white canvas into a cute little painting that you did. So you have a lot to be proud of. All right, so after you're done with those outlines, the last thing is, is a little bit of white paint. Um, and this is just some highlights. So just observe where I place it and mimic that as close as you can on your canvas. These are not, you know, solid straight lines. They're just kind of in an area and it's pretty cool to see how it just kind of breaks up the space um, when you look at it from a distance. So just kind of play with it. And thank you guys so much for getting creative with me. Please do not wait too long to do your next creative uh, project. And until then, cheers. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the process of painting and I hope how you liked how your paintings turned out. I'm really proud of you for painting at home. As you're uploading your pictures to social media, please tag me at or hashtag paintwithlovejoy or email me your pictures paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. I really enjoy seeing those. I try to post them on social media um, and encourage other beginners and first time painters to try painting. So please share this with your community and keep getting creative. If you have any comments, feedback, suggestions, things you want me to paint in the future, go ahead and leave a comment and I will um, answer them as quickly as I can and try to get those new paintings um, in my production list and on the rotation. So thanks again for taking time out of your day to get creative with me. Don't wait too long to do your next one. And until then, cheers.